Today we're going to be talking about plotting points in three-dimensional coordinate space. And in this particular problem, we've been given four coordinate points, each of which are defined in three-dimensional coordinate space, and we've been asked to plot them in three-dimensional coordinate space. I've gone ahead and drawn four different sets of three-dimensional axes, all of which are going to follow the right-hand rule where we have our axes, our coordinate axes set up as x, y, and z this way. And I'm going to plot one of these points on each set of axes. Now, before we keep going, because this is the very beginning of three-dimensional coordinate space, moving from two-dimensional coordinate space, I just want to make a note that for anybody who might be confused, remember that in two-dimensional coordinate space, we just had two variables, x and y, and we would have a two-dimensional coordinate system like this with x and y. And if we had a point, let's say we called our point 2, 3, then we would move out a distance of 2 along the x-axis, and then up a distance of 3 along the y-axis, and our coordinate point here would be this point right here, 2, 3, like this. Well, this is going to be the same concept for three-dimensional coordinate space, except that we have to deal with a third dimension or a third variable, which is z. And z is really just adding a third dimension, a height component, to this flat xy coordinate plane. So if we wanted to take this point 2, 3, and we wanted to plot it in three-dimensional coordinate space, what we would need to assume is that we were actually moving to the point 2, 3, 0, where 0 is our z coordinate. We're not going to be moving up a distance along the z axis at all. We're going to be staying in the xy coordinate plane. So what we would do is we'd come out a distance of 2 along the x axis here, and then we would move parallel to the y axis up a distance of 3, let's say right here, and that point 2, 3 would be here in our three-dimensional coordinate system with no height component here in the z-axis. We wouldn't move up along the z-axis or down along the z-axis. We would stay in the xy coordinate plane. What I mean by coordinate planes is we have three coordinate planes here. We have three coordinate axes, the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. We ha then have three coordinate planes. One is the xy coordinate plane, and the xy coordinate plane is this plane here, this flat plane that includes the x-axis and the y-axis, but not the z-axis. Any point that lies in the xy coordinate plane will have a value, a z value in the coordinate point of zero. And this xy coordinate plane is the same two-dimensional xy coordinate plane that we're used to seeing when we have two variables. That's why we could take this point two, three, add a z value, z coordinate point here of zero, and keep this point in the xy coordinate plane. This is our xy coordinate plane. We also have the yz coordinate plane, which is this plane here. If I draw lines, da dotted lines, dashed lines that are parallel to each of these axes, this plane includes the z axis and the y axis, but every point that lies in this plane here will have an x value in its coordinate point of zero. This is the yz coordinate plane. And our third coordinate plane here is the xz coordinate plane right here. And every point that lies in this coordinate plane will have a y value of zero. This is the xz coordinate plane. And of course, we can have points that don't lie exactly in each of these three planes, but lie somewhere in between them. If any value, if any value in in this coordinate point is zero, I know it's going to lie in one of our coordinate planes. So for example, this first point, zero, five, two. Because the x value is zero, I know that it's going to lie in the y, z plane. This point here, because the y value is zero, I know it's gonna lie in the x, z plane. These two points, 2, 4, 6, and 1, negative 1, 2, are not going to lie in any one of our three coordinate planes because none of their component values are equal to 0. 
2, 4, and 6 are not equal to 0, and 1, negative 1, and 2 are all not equal to 0. So these two points are not going to lie in coordinate planes. So let's talk about now plotting points in this three-dimensional coordinate system. Well, let me first erase this little point that we drew as a translation from our xy coordinate plane. If I look at the point 0, 5, 2, what I know is that I'm moving out a distance along the x-axis of 0, right? These points are all x, y, Z. I'm moving out a distance along the x-axis of 0 because the x value is 0. So what that tells me is that I start at the origin. I'm not going to move any distance along the x-axis because my x value is 0. So from the origin still, I'm going to move out a distance along the y-axis of 5. So I'm going to go out here to, let's say, 5. I'm going to go out here to 5. Let's call that y equals 5. And then my z value is positive 2, which means I'm going to move up a distance along the z-axis or parallel to the z-axis of 2. Let's say that's a value of 2 there. And I'm going to plot my point here, right here. This is the point 0, 5, 2. It lies in the yz plane. So I'm going to say 0, 5, 2. 2, it lies in the yz plane, the x value is 0. And what I like to do sometimes just to clarify is I like to draw corresponding parallel lines to make a rectangle out of this. Because this lies in one of our coordinate planes, we're just going to see a rectangle here. But our last two points that don't lie in coordinate planes, we're going to see a box. But here we see a rectangle. That gives us a better picture of exactly where this point is. Sometimes it can be hard to visualize in three-dimensional space, but drawing a rectangle like this that goes out to this point helps us visualize exactly where it is. Now let's look at 4, 0, negative 1. Well, in this case, I'm going to come out a distance along the x-axis of 4. Let's say that that's a distance of 4 along the x-axis. The y value is 0. So if I had a non-zero y value, I would move out parallel to the y-axis this way, or if the y value is negative, out parallel to the y-axis this way. But because it's 0, I'm going to stick here along my x-axis. Then I move a distance of negative 1 along the z-axis. Well, when the z value is positive, I move up parallel to the z axis. When it's negative, I move down parallel to the z axis, a distance of 1. And there's my point right there. I can go ahead and label it as 4, 0, negative 1. And because it's going to lie in the xz coordinate plane, I can just draw a rectangle here that illustrates that xz coordinate plane. And I know that my point is in that plane. 2, 4, 6 gets a little more interesting. I move out a distance of 2 along the x-axis, like this. Then I move out a distance of 4 parallel to the y-axis. Well, the positive direction of the y-axis is this way, so I'm going to move out a distance of 4. It should be double the distance of the x distance here, because I have 2 and then 4. So let's call that 4. And then I'm going to move up a distance of 6 parallel to the z-axis. This is the positive direction of the z-axis this way. So I'm going to move up. If I move up a distance of 6, let's say that that's 6 right there, then here's my point 2, 4, 6. Now if I really wanted to illustrate where that point is, one thing that I could do is just go ahead and draw a rectangle that coincides with that point and the origin. This point is at one vertex of our rectangular box here, and another vertex of the box is at the origin. So I can go ahead and draw this box right here. There's this other point at the origin right here, but basically my box looks like this if I draw dash lines back here. But there's that box, and see how drawing the box right there makes this point pop out, and I can really see where it is. I can label it as 2, 4, 6. But if I didn't draw that box, if I took those green lines away, it'd kind of be floating. I wouldn't really be able to tell exactly where it was. Here I can tell it's in the first octant of this three-dimensional coordinate system here. Now same idea here when we're graphing the point 1, negative 1, 2. We have our x value which is positive, so we want to move out on the positive direction of the x-axis, which is out this way. So we're going to move out a distance of 1. Let's say that that's 1 right there. Then our y value is negative 1. So this over here is the positive direction of the y-axis. So since our y value is negative, 
we're going to move parallel to the y-axis, but away from the positive direction, we're going to move in the negative direction out a distance of 1. So let's say that that's there. And then our z value is positive. This is the positive direction of our z-axis. So we're going to move up two units parallel to the z-axis. So we're going to move parallel to the z-axis up two units. Let's say that's two right there. And here's our coordinate point 1, negative 1, 2. Now if we want to fill this out and draw our box so we get a better perspective of exactly where this point is, we can fill in the other sides of our box like this along the z-axis and like this and like this and we can draw dotted lines here to represent the back of our box like this and that gives us a much clearer picture of exactly where our coordinate point is in relation to our coordinate axes and we can label it as 1, negative 1, 2. You should always label the coordinate point after you sketch it like that. So that's just a basic overview of how to plot points in three-dimensional coordinate space.